In today's video, I'll be giving you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create G-code in Fusion 360 so you can cut aluminum plate on a small CNC machine like I have at home. I'm using a 3018 Sane Smart Genmitsu CNC, which is kind of like a run-of-the-mill, small, cheap hobby CNC, but I was able to get pretty nice results cutting out this aluminum plate. I'm going to take you through every step that I take in order to produce the G-code. So here we have a bracket that I'm using to reinforce the hip joint. You'll finish designing your part using the design workspace in Fusion 360 and then switch over to the manufacturer workspace. And you're going to want to create a new setup. I designed my part with a little bit of an angle to it, so I need to change the work coordinate system. So to do that, I'm going to select the X and Y axes. So my X axis, I'll have that, and Y axis there. When we switch to the stock tab, we can see it produces this yellow box around the part. I'm going to reduce the offset on the top. I'm also going to reduce the offset on the sides because I'm not really using that feature. Alright, so now we have our setup. So if I go into Origin, this will help me define where my zero point is for when I start my program. So I'm going to set my Origin to be the top left corner. So when it's on my machine, I'll move the end mill to the top left corner and then I'll know it'll start from there and cut the part out. So the first thing I want to do is drill all these holes out. In order to do that, I'll go into the... In order to do that, I'm going to use the drilling utility and I'll just select all the holes I want to drill. And it doesn't matter which order you select these in. It'll automatically determine what the best order is to go in and I'll need to select a tool for this operation. Kind of the default tool size is a 1 8 inch end mill. In my last video I used a 1 8 inch end mill and I felt that that was producing kind of high forces for what the machine is capable of. So I purchased a 3 seconds end mill. So if I type in 3 seconds, all it's showing me is drill bits. Okay, yeah, that's not showing up. So I might need to make a new tool here. So I'll start with the 1 8 inch flat end mill. So I'll select that. Now I'll duplicate the tool and in the second version I'm going to edit it. So I'll call this 330 seconds flat end mill. I think the brand was Tiger or something so I'll just say Tiger. Now my tool has four flutes, clockwise rotation, inches, I believe it's high speed steel, diameter. So this is the important one. This is 330 seconds. And it automatically calculates it. The shaft diameter is 1 eighth of an inch. I'm going to need to lower this feed rate way down. So in my last video, I divided it by 4, it was still too fast. I divided it by 4 again, and it was still too fast again. So I'm going to try dividing it by 4 three times. Alright, so about 1 inch per minute. So it's going to be really slow, but that's all the machine can handle. It really isn't designed to be cutting out aluminum plates quickly and I'll just change all of these to one inch per minute. And for plunging, I think it needs to be even lower than one inch per minute. So we'll just go with uh, 0.2 inches per minute. So I'm doing everything that I can to reduce loading on the tool head. You can reduce the cutting feed rate, which lowers it, and you can also use a smaller end mill, which also reduces that. So what I learned from last time is that I need to take it as easy as possible on this machine. Alright, so we'll call that good. And, uh oh. Okay. And here it is. So here's my new tool. So if you set this up properly, just by selecting your tool and using the correct preset, that should automatically populate your feed rates. 
which is really nice because if you mess up your feed rates, it's going to go too fast and it's going to mess stuff up. My machine doesn't have a lot of Z travel, so I'm going to reduce this clearance height to 8 millimeters, and I'll reduce the retract height to 4 millimeters. And this is important because I have holes that are lower than the surface of the part, and since this is my first operation, this whole cutout won't exist. So it's going to need to feed slowly from the top of the part down. And if we look at the feed height, I think I'll choose to feed from the stock top. For some of these operations, it's going to be moving quickly, but when it starts getting close to the part, it'll slow down and not break the bit. So now that we've finished our first tool path, we'll play it back using the simulator. Alright, that looks good. The next step I'm going to take is to bore these holes. So this first operation, drilling, you can see this blue outline. It just drills out the center of the hole and it makes the hole the same diameter as the tool that you're using. If I want the hole to be the correct size as I've defined on the model, I'm going to want to use the boring function. Once I've selected the boring function, I just click on all the holes that I want to bore out for a lot of these holes, it just moves down to the top surface of the part and then starts boring. But for these ones, it actually moves down to the top of this hole, which is below the top surface of the stock that I'm working with, and then starts boring. And this can cause a problem if I haven't machined this pocket out first. In this case, I haven't machined the pocket out first, so I'm going to need to fix this. So I can go into heights here and change the height top from the hole top. So that means it starts boring from the top of the hole as defined on the model. If I change that to the stock top, now it starts boring once it gets to the, t the top of that yellow box that we saw earlier. So this is the setting that I want because this pocket won't exist until after I do this step. Alright, and I'm just going to change a couple of settings here. For some reason it chose a custom preset, but if we just click on this, and go back to the aluminum slotting preset that we defined in the first step. That should load all of those feed parameters in there. Another thing I want to change is the pitch of these spirals. So the pitch defines the distance between each uh, spiral segment as it descends. So I set this to 0.25, so it moves down 0.25 inches every time it goes around. All right, and that looks pretty good to me. I'm going to check my heights. So I want to change these heights to what I had in the previous operation. So that was 4 and 8. There we go. And we'll click OK. And that's my boring operation. After I've bored this hole, I'm going to have this free floating slug in the middle there. So actually I think I'm going to move this boring operation to the end. So I'll double click this and I'll click on that one right there to delete it and now I've removed that operation. So next thing I want to do is cut the slot out this whole thing here. The right one to use is 2D Pocket. So I'll select this. I'll have my tool, yep that's the one I had selected earlier and I'll set this to aluminum slotting. I'll change these heights to what I have in my other settings. All right. And I'll select my slotting preset that I had earlier. Optimal load. Oh. I'll set this to about 40% of the tool diameter. Alright, and let's see, 
That looks pretty good. I want to cut this out in multiple passes. So instead of going to the full depth of cut on the first round, I'm going to have a couple of levels in between here. So if I open this back up, I can go to passes and well, I'll change the maximum roughing step down to one millimeter. And then click OK. And now you can see it's going to take multiple steps down as it cuts this hole out. Something that I notice here is these yellow lines represent travel moves where the where it might be moving faster than when it's actually cutting material but these travel moves might be going through actual material here. So I'll see if I can fix that. Well, I was able to get rid of those tool paths that were cutting through that area here by increasing the lift height to the depth of this pocket. And when I do that, I get a warning here that I don't really understand. But it looks like the tool path is behaving better. So now it lifts all the way out before it moves and that should prevent it from colliding with the chunk of material that should be left in the middle here. But I'm just going to copy and paste this bore and I'm going to add this hole and I'm going to get rid of all these other holes. So now that'll bore this piece out and I'm a little worried about that, so if it cuts this out, there's going to be a slug floating around in this workspace, and I don't want to have any material just loose, uncontrolled. So I'm going to change the heights, so instead of going down to the bottom of the hole, it'll stay a little bit above that. So I'll put in something like 0.5 millimeters and now it'll leave a little bit at the bottom and then I can remove that in post-processing. Alright, and my last step is going to be to cut this whole piece out. So I'm going to do a 2D contour operation and I'll click this one. And I will change my heights as I have for all the other steps. I'm going to change my passes by enabling the multiple depths option and my step down I'll have it at half a millimeter. And this should cut the part out at the end. Alright, so let's do a recap. We created the tool in the tool library that we'll be using. This 330 seconds end mill. We adjusted the parameters so that it's true to the size of the end mill. We changed the cutting data by modifying the aluminum slotting profile to have a really conservative and slow feed rate for both cutting and plunging. We created the drill operation which will cut out the center of all of these holes. And let me just check the top height. I'll change this from hole top to stock top. And that way, just like with my boring operation, it slows down and feeds at the correct rate when it gets to the top of the stock part because it's not going to have all these holes and pockets before I start this operation. Then I'm going to bore all these holes out to get them to the correct diameter. I'll then do adaptive clearing to create this pocket. I'm going to be left with a slug in the middle, which I'll then bore out and I'll leave a little bit on the bottom so that it doesn't fall loose and jam the tool or anything like that. And then I'll cut out the outside of this part. So that all looks good to me. I think I'm ready to run it and see how it works. The only thing that looks a little different than what I was expecting is the location of the origin. So let me just go back into my setup here. And I'm going to select this top left point because that's just how I'm used to working with it. I like to have the top left be the starting location. So I put my tool in this location and when I press play it cuts everything out. 
and that's just a standard that I follow so I don't mess it up. I'll just recalculate all of these because I changed the origin. All right, and then we're good. One last change I wanted to make is I added tabs. So if we go into the geometry section, you can enable tabs. And this will leave little features on the bottom that will hold the part and keep it from falling out when it's done cutting. Now I'll export this using post-process. So the only thing I need to make sure that's correct here is that I have it set to Gerbil, which the Sane Smart CNC uses a Gerbil style controller. Let me change the output folder to my SD card. And this will be called HIP1. Now I'm going to open up Universal G Code Sender and load my code that I just produced to see if everything makes sense. Okay, the only thing that's standing out to me right away is that it's having a travel move where it moves right along the surface of this part. And that might scuff it up a little bit, but I'm not too worried about that. It's starting in the top left corner just like I want, and it appears to have the right scale. Alright, and if you made it to the end, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below, and if this helped you, make sure to smash that like button. And check out my other videos. I'll be posting another one soon that shows how I was able to almost completely soundproof my CNC, and it documents me cutting this part out. Thanks for watching, and bye.